Cheers and welcome my friends, I'm Honor Truck and we are playing European Universalis 4 together with the newest DLC, Rights of Man. Paradox has been so kind as to give me a press code for this and uh, I am pretty certain that this DLC will finally push me over the 1000 hours playtime. I currently have 943, I've been playing a couple of hours yesterday just to get into the DLC. It uh, has one massive change and a lot of other changes. Uh, we're gonna play as Bavaria because everyone and uh, everyone and their mother is actually playing Brandenburg because the accompanying patch to the Rights of Man is called um, the Prussia patch and Prussia gains a unique form of government and all that. But there are a lot of Let's Plays out there with Brandenburg, um, uh, so if you if you want to watch that, just. Uh, um, watch one of those that are already out there they are pretty good um, really enjoyed the one that uh, Arumba did I am going to play Bavaria um, now for settings we're gonna go for very hard uh, because otherwise it wouldn't be too fun so the AI gains a lot of bonuses and is uh, smarter and uh, diplomacy will be more difficult for us we're also gonna go for lucky nations which gives the AI even more bonuses or at least certain AI countries. This is to simulate the rise of some great powers and tends to uh, result in, uh, as they say, a more historical world. And I actually like that because I like to be confronted with um, historical problems that we have. Other than that, uh, we do use the dynamic uh, province names, so they are named depending on what country holds them, if they have their own name for that. We're gonna keep the color owned wastelands on and the exclaves. Uh, we're not playing with a random new world, so that's fine. And let's just jump straight into the game. I'm gonna play on normal because I'm not gonna go for any achievement and stuff. And uh, with let's plays, it is it is better to have some saves. I don't want to trust my whole series into one Iron Man save game. That would be that would be kind of annoying. Now um, Bavaria. For a couple of reasons actually. First of all, I live in Bavaria currently. I have grown up over here in Oberpfalz, which uh, at this time belonged to the Palatinate, um, but is a part of uh, Bavaria today. I grew up there um, after the age of seven. I was born in, um, where is it? Yeah, over here in, in St. Gallen. Um, it's named St. Gallen, but it should be uh, up until. Um, and then I grew up there, studied in Munich, and currently I live um, over here. Uh, I guess over there somewhere, just before the Donau, the, the Danube makes that makes that sort of uh, knick. Now, um, Bavaria is actually a very interesting country to play because we can go a couple ways, and I want to play this. Um, uh, and try to go for the emperorship. We are part of the HRE, and uh, currently Austria is the is the emperor, and we sort of do have to sway these electors, these seven princes, to vote for us instead of Austria, which is going to be difficult. We have to play a very savvy, cautious, careful game. Um, normally, European Universalis, it's it's all about conquering as much as possible. We can't really do that in the HRE. We do have to conquer a little bit um, just because we are a small country in the HRE and, it, and you can see that um, they they tell you, uh, they give you a number um, how likely they are to vote for you. Uh, positive numbers are good, negative numbers are bad and you can see that they are voting for Austria because they are a large nation in the empire and that is worth 25 points. That's a lot. We have to We have to get there. On the other hand, the empire is only as strong as the number of princes in the empire. So what we have to do is we have to expand without killing off too much princes in the process. So we've got to expand carefully. We don't have, uh, can't afford to piss too many people off. And what we want to do first, our first goal of expansion is going to be Salzburg over here. And it's going to be Ansbach over here. We actually do like us a fair bit, so we might just be able to vassalize them. That might be good. We could go for... Um, yeah, we do have a mission to uh, to go the historical route. We cannot have any rivals in our own little corner of Germany. The lands of Ansbach legally belong to a uh, Kade branch of the Hohenzollern family. We must have them. We must have them for ourselves. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna take that. Um, we're just gonna piss them off a little bit because we now have a claim on their lands. 
Uh, we definitely have to ally Austria because Austria is the emperor currently and if we take long land inside the HRE and we're not allied with Austria they're gonna hit us with a um, claim uh, for unlawful imperial territory and we will be forced to either give the province back or risk the, the wrath not only of Austria who might take arms against us um, but also the wrath of the other members because they are all bigots in the Holy Roman Empire. On the one hand they are conquering like crazy, on the other hand they get pissed off when you do it. So um, this is going to be an interesting campaign. Let's have a look at um, our ideas because Bavaria is actually set up very well to go for emperorship in case you can wrestle it away from Austria. Um, so we do have the everlasting succession that gives us plus one yearly legitimacy very very important if you go for emperor because legitimacy um, brings up your diplomatic reputation and it helps you in a lot of different ways these guys take your legitimacy into account if you have a look at the if they have a look at their vote they give us 50 points just because we have 100 legitimacy and with that idea we can keep up our legitimacy very well next one production efficiency money always good and then we get the bavarian state orchestra which increases our yearly prestige again very good for being emperor because these guys they rate our prestige so prestige needs to be up legitimacy needs to be up um third, uh, fourth idea is um geistlicher rat which increases papal influence and missionary strength versus heretics. Again, very important, especially when we when we do become emperor, because um, the HRE will be embroiled in a religious war between the Protestants and the Catholics. So, again, very good. Then 10% more taxes, because uh, we become the brewmaster general. A lot of these ideas revolve around beer. I think it's okay. It's sort of it's sort of an in joke. Uh, in joke, we Bavarians certainly do more things than drink beer, but it's a pretty big part of uh, of what we do. And then we can go for the professional army, five percent discipline. It's nice. It's not as crazy good as what uh, Brandenburg will get, but uh, we don't really want to compete on that level. And then we're gonna go for stability cost modifier, and we do have a fifty percent increased chance for a new heir, which is very very good. I like it. Um, so these are our national ideas. We are very likely going towards diplomatic ideas just to gain an additional diplomat, more diplomatic relations, Im increased improved relation and more diplomatic reputation. Very, very important, all that stuff. And um, the rest of it, yeah, it's nice. And uh, Austria tends to go with influence ideas, which is also good. It uh, reduces your aggressive expansion impact and uh, increases your reputation and more relations so at some point we want to go for that as well um, I think we have to go for economic ideas as our second group uh, maybe third group if we tell if we uh, decide to pick up a military idea group um, but we definitely want the reduced um, inflation because um, what we have to do um, as I said is we have to take land and grow without killing off too many of the princes and that means first allying to Austria to be able to do anything in the HRE and then once we become empire uh, emperor we will try to snipe provinces from um, Austria I'll be content if Austria only has um, Vienna over here uh, or yeah a couple of provinces they can exist but I don't want them to be very big so what we're gonna try to take is first and foremost the gold mine over here we definitely need that one um, just because it puts out a lot of money and they haven't even upgraded it to um, nine. Uh, oh, they changed that. Prior to that, it was if you stayed under 10, um, if you stayed under 10 production um, development, it, it would never deplete. And now it seems it, it just the uh, chances re uh, reduced. Okay, that's fine. And we also want to go for this gold mine over here in Cheb. Um, so we're gonna try to take a couple of couple of provinces from Bohemia and sort of feed off the bigger nations in the HRE. We have to cozy up to the um, to the electors. Um, if you have a look at the HRE, you will see that um, the emperor is this purplish color, and the electors are this brownish color. So you can see that. Um, the Palatinate is one, um, Trier is one, Cologne is one, Mainz is one, um, Saxony is one, 
Uh, Brandenburg is one and uh, Bohemia is one. And it is easier to become emperor if you already own a vote. So if you're Brandenburg, that's cool. That's useful to you if you are um, Palatinate, useful. But we can survive without it. Austria does it. They are not an elector. They are still the emperor though. Um, so yeah, we've got to cozy up to them. Let's have a look at our diplomatic situation here. Um, diplomatic situation. Who's our enemy? So Augsburg is our enemy right next to us. Um, Bohemia is our enemy. That's not good. They are pretty powerful. I don't really want to piss them off. Um, Palatinate is our rival. That's not good. And Nuremberg is our enemy. That's also not good. Um, because these are uh, Nuremberg is a free city and they can actually be quite powerful because they get a reduction to development costs so they tend to develop their one province they are limited to one province or they lose the status of free city and they are protected by the Emperor so I can't just attack them even though I want to it's gonna be one difficult thing to grow and on the same time keep up the amount of princes first uh, attack goal is Salzburg because that is in our own state in Upper Bavaria if you have a look at the states and territories you can see that uh, we have our capital state over here um, Upper Bavaria consisting of Ingolstadt and München and uh, Salzburg is in this state even though we don't own it so if we take that province we don't have to pay any state maintenance we just gain um, the income from this one and then the other one is Oberpfalz. Um, not sure if we can do that anytime soon. And then we want Ansbach um, because we do have the mission for it. Uh, I think I already took that mission. Yeah, okay. So we want Ansbach. And we might actually just ally them, try to vassalize them. Are they? They should be weak enough to be vassalized. Um, doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. Well, maybe we can swing it. Military power compared to Ansbachian. Ansbach is a member of the empire. Economic base. Yeah. Uh, one of the major changes of um, of this new expansion is the changes to tech. So prior to this um, DLC and this patch, you had tech groups um, that um, had a hard increase in... Um, in tech cost for um, regions that were historically less developed. That is gone. Now we have institutions and these institutions spread um, from a given date. So you see that um, nearly everyone in Europe, feudalism has spread and has been embraced. Some of these hordes over here haven't done that yet, uh, but most of Europe does have feudalism, which gives them some, uh, some bonuses. Now the next one that's gonna hit is the Renaissance in 1450. Uh, it's going to reduce build cost and development cost when it's embraced. And every year that you do not embrace this, you get hit by a 1% um, penalty until you do. Um, and that sort of um, gets rid of that artificial tech group thing and really makes this an, orga an, an organic thing that you can actually influence, which I really, really like. It always was a little bit weird that Poland... Um, could be as oriented on uh, the rest of Europe as it wanted. It would never get um, over its Eastern technology group. That's different now. The uh, technology groups, they still do exist. Um, but they only exist, uh, I think, because they have to, um, they have to, I think, be used to show you the correct um, sprites for your units and unit types and all that. But they don't actually matter anymore for... Um, for your tech cost and one thing about the institutions is that you need um, there are certain th thresholds for um, for spreading stuff so there is 10 development which increases the spread of new institutions and there's 20 development so what we want to do is we definitely want to develop our home province to 20 development so that we get the maximum um, uh, spread of institutions in our realm so that we don't stay behind on tech um, the other provinces that we have this is 12 development 11 13 7 okay so we will have to develop Ingolstadt to 10 to get the maximum spread and we will develop this into a development of 20 which is going to be fine uh, just to get the, the maximum I, uh, Renaissance tends to start somewhere in Italy uh, let's just hope that it um, 
that it spreads rather fast over the Alps towards us. Now, um, in terms of units, oh yeah, I, we are set um, for Halbert infantry. I prefer the Latin medieval infantry because they do have some defensive morale. These guys don't. Um, I'd rather have a sort of a balanced unit. Um, we're gonna go and bring our guys up to force limit. Um, that does it. We're gonna build three more infantry um, regiments. Um, we definitely have to um, be friends with Austria. So let's go for let's go for a royal marriage with Austria. That's gonna help. Um, and then the question is, to what prince do we want to cozy up to? Bohemia, no. Palatinate, no. Hmm. Would we be able to vassalize you? I mean, they only have seven development, and we have, I think, 58. Uh, I would be able to take them without too many problems, and I could concentrate on Salzburg. On the other hand, they're gonna take up a relationship slot. We might not be able to take them over. Um, we'll try it. We'll try it. We oh, they have mines as their rival. That's not good. I was actually counting on getting mines um, on my side. That's not good. So, yeah, we do want Salzburg. So I'm going to set them as my rival. Don't want to piss them off, but I want them. Augsburg is my enemy in any case, so I'm going to do this. Then I just need one more. Um... I'm gonna have all my three neighbors as my enemies if I set them to be rivals. I don't really wanna um, harden my uh, the resistance of the electors against me though. So I'm not gonna pick either the Palatinate or Bohemia. That's just not good. That would do me no good at all. We wanna be friends with them or friendly-ish. Hmm. Yeah, let's take Nuremberg. Why not? Why not? It's 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 kind of historical. They always had beef with um, the Bavarian rulers anyway, so that's that's kind of good. Um, now, next question is: Is Trier the enemy of Cologne? No, they are not. That is very good. So we do have Cologne over here, and we have Trier. They are right next to each other, so sometimes they rival each other. They did not this time, which is good. Um, that is going to be a problem though. Saxony is the rival of Brandenburg, so we have to decide between them. Um, interesting. I'm going to try to vassalize Ansbach. Yeah, we already have the domineering uh, thing there. So let's go for the alliance. Let's bring them on uh, in the fold. Uh, we are going to go for Salzburg soonish. Uh, uh, because it is in the um, in our upper Bavaria state and it's not going to cost us any maintenance. So that's going to be a thing. Let's have a look at the strategic priorities. Oh, fuck. That's not good. So we're actually going to have um, Austria as our enemy if we go for Salzburg. That's not good. That's not good at all. Hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll deal with it. We'll deal with it. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, the problem is um, that they're going to be really pissed if we take it. Um, they also want that province over there. So um, yellow means, yeah, strategic utility. We could take it. We could not take it. It's fine. Red means we really want this. They're likely to attack any country holding it and unlikely to ally any other country that is laying claim to it. So we definitely have to get strong enough to take that away from that. I'm not gonna leave that with Austria because it is in our in our states, uh, but it's fine. It's fine, we can deal with it. Um, let's just uh, let the game run for a little bit. So we are um, married to Austria now. No, and Ansbach is already allied with the Palatinate. I don't like that too much, but oh well. Uh, because the Palatinate could actually snipe the vassalization from us. Oh yeah, and one thing that I wanted to do is the estates. Um, the burghers actually do have Regensburg over here. 
I don't want to leave that with them because if it is given to an estate, then um, the autonomy can never drop below 25%, which is a shame. Uh, the nobility has Lancet, and that's fine for me. Um, but the burghers can't can't keep Regensburg. Uh, we do want to kind of get some points here, so let's let's demand the military support, and then we have to go for the for the diet. So that's fine. Um, let's demand the diplomatic support. Mm, they are kind of pissed now. I think I'm going to give them the monopoly charters. So that's fine. And the clergy. We could look for the support of the clergy, which is going to reduce our legitimacy. But I think it, I think it's going to be fine. Let's demand the admin support. Um, okay, so we, we've uh, milked off enough points of them. I could go for the general, which does not change their... Um, it does not change their loyalty, only their influence. But it would be kind of dangerous to push them up to over 80, because then you get a disaster. On the other hand, having a better general might be kind of useful. Yeah, let's go for it. Why not? It's going to be dangerous, uh, but I think we can live with it. What do we get? Karl von Armansberg. Yeah, three shock, one fire, one maneuver. Could be better, could be worse. I'm going to take you. One of the other changes that we have actually... In this patch is the fact that our rulers do get personality traits. So our current ruler, Duke uh, Albrecht III von Wittelsbach, does have the benevolent um, trait, reduces the liberty desire. An AI ruler with benevolent would send gifts more often. Very interesting. Um, we do have uh, another personality trait in four years and another one in 19 years. Our heir doesn't have a personality trait. He's really shitty though. One military skill... One admin skill, that's it. That's not good. We wanna try to get rid of him. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe he just maybe we just kill him off the, the old fashioned way um, by making him a general, sending him into, into the front lines, praying that he dies. Um, if you don't wanna do that and you have at least positive prestige, you can take a 50 prestige hit and just disinherit your heir. That's the thing. And that is our queen consort, or yeah, our consort, not queen consort. Um, Anna von Welf, who is a sinner. That's not good. <laughs> Tolerance of the true faith, minus two. But only if she becomes a ruler. So as long as she doesn't rise to power, this is going to be fine. Um, she would take over instead of a um, regency council. Consort will start a regency with a claim determined by the greatest of our current legitimacy, that of the consort's origin country and the heir's claim. Interesting. So, yeah, that is that is one of the new mechanics. I quite like it. Regency council is always bad because you can't declare any wars. With this, you can if you want to. So that's good. Now, let's just develop our... Uh, let's just develop Munich up to the 20 that we actually need, so... Let's go for this, and should I go for military here as well? I'd rather spend my military over there in uh, Lansut because they do have the nobility in there. Where's the where's the manpower? You can see that the um, nobility buffs that by 20%, which is quite nice. Um, let's go for one more, one more, and yeah, let's let's put that in. So now we are at. The development that we need to um, ensure maximum spread in there. We could go ahead and develop Ingolstadt as well. I'm not sure if it's worth it. At least not now. Um, I think we want to keep our points for other stuff. I think that would be good. And with that, I think I'm going to end it here. Um, we definitely need to improve relations with Austria. That's what we're going to do in the next episode. And then I think we're going to cozy up to to Trier over here. We're going to Royal Mary Ansbach and we'll try to do what we can. Um, the fact that Austria won Salzburg is unfortunate, but I think we can get around that um, in the future. Maybe if we become emperor, we'll be able to, to take them out. We will have to do a delicate diplomatic game, shifting our alliances just at the right moment. Which is something that didn't really work out for Bavaria. They shifted their alliances to Napoleon. And in the end they did gain nothing from that. So 
Well, yeah, I think I'm going to end the episode here. Next time we're going to really, really start into this campaign. I am, I'm looking very much forward to it. EO4 is one of my, one of my favorite games of all times, and it's been a while since I played it last, so really looking forward to it. If you enjoyed this episode, um, please leave a like. Uh, very helpful, especially in the first episode of a series. Uh, if you didn't like this, uh, then uh, tell me why in the comments so I can improve. And if you want to see more of this series in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hope you join me next time. Thanks and bye bye.